Suppose there is an enzyme that is represented by this lock and the key over here represents the substrate that the enzyme is going to catalyze. Now according to the lock and key model of enzymatic reactions, the substrate is going to fit the enzyme like how a key would fit a lock. This would then lead to the reaction, the substrate being converted into a product. That is what the lock and key model describes. But it was then discovered that this model had a lot of limitations, that this model couldn't exactly explain how enzymatic reactions were taking place. For starters, several enzymes can act on more than one substrate in a chemical reaction. This lock and key model did not account for those types of enzymes, how an enzyme could have more than one substrate when a key cannot have more than one lock. So according to this model, an enzyme can have only one substrate. Second, analysis revealed that as the enzyme binds to the substrate, a transition state is formed. A transition state is like an intermediate state which then leads to the formation of the product. Scientists could not figure out how the lock and key model led to the formation of the transition state. So that is one more limitation. Third, further analysis revealed that as the substrate binds to the enzyme, the enzyme undergoes a conformational change or a change in its 3D shape. This model, lock and key model is quite rigid and it did not account for the conformational change an enzyme undergoes. So that is one more limitation of this model. So scientists were trying to come up with a model that could explain these limitations and could still explain how enzymatic reactions took place. That's when they came up with the induced fit theory, which is what we'll be learning today, the induced fit theory. Now, how does this theory work? Suppose this is an enzyme. This is the active site of the enzyme, the site where the substrate is going to come and bind. And this is the substrate. Now, if you notice carefully, you realize that the shape of the active site is not the same as the shape of the substrate. You know that for an enzyme to work properly, the substrate needs to come and bind to the enzyme. Only if it binds properly can the reaction take place, can the enzyme catalyze the conversion of substrate to product. If the substrate is not fitting in the active site properly, then how can this enzyme catalyze this substrate? It's quite confusing, isn't it? That also feels like a limitation of the induced fit theory. But no, believe me, this is where the induced fit theory actually makes sense. So according to this theory, after the substrate comes and binds to the enzyme, the enzyme actually undergoes a conformational change or a change in its 3D shape. Now how does that occur? Recall that enzymes are nothing but proteins, right? And proteins are made up of amino acids. So there are these amino acids at the active site of this enzyme and these amino acids are going to form temporary bonds with the molecules in the substrate. Now as these bonds are being formed, keep in mind that temporary, they are going to break again very soon. So as these bonds are formed, this causes the enzyme to undergo a conformational change. So initially the active site was like this, now after the substrate has bound to the active site, the shape of the active site changes so that it can fit the substrate better. The substrate induces a conformational change in the enzyme which makes the substrate fit the enzyme better. So that is why this is called induced fit theory because the substrate induces a change in the enzyme's shape. Now as the enzyme undergoes a conformational change, it leads to the formation of the transition state. Now if you can recall the transition state is an intermediate state that is formed as the enzyme substrate complex is formed and in this transition state a lot of things are happening very quickly. Bonds in the substrate are being broken and newer bonds are being formed which leads to the formation of the product. Now the product has much less affinity for the active site compared to the substrate. Because of this once the product is formed, it is able to be released quickly from the enzyme. The product can dissociate quickly from the enzyme. Now after this happens, there are no more bonds in the enzyme's active site that is keeping this active site in this shape. So the active site comes back to its original conformation. 
after the product leaves the enzyme the enzyme returns to its original conformation if we go back here this was the original shape it then changed like this to fit the enzyme better now it's going to go back to its original conformation as the enzyme goes back to its original conformation it is now free to react with more substrates thus continuing the reaction so two of the limitations of the lock and key model are explained perfectly by the induced fit theory one is the change in conformation the substrate binds to the enzyme which causes a conformational change in the enzyme and then the formation of the transition state the enzyme as it is induced to fit the substrate the transition state is formed what about the presence of more than one substrate well that is also explained by the induced fit theory now after the enzyme returns to its original conformation it is now free to bind to another substrate so if there is another substrate that is of a different shape it's just going to come and bind to another active site and that active site will also not be of the exact shape as this substrate so if this is the substrate the active site of the enzyme is still going to be like this as this binds the enzyme can still undergo a conformational change which would then cause this substrate to be converted into a product so that's about the induced fit theory